Hi friends, um, welcome to my talk. The talk um, title for today is the evolution of deploying node on servers and platforms. So let's get into it. Um, my name is um, Shedrak Akintayo. I am a developer relations engineer at Platform Message. I also do my bit of technical writing and I like to build communities, which I've done with Facebook DevC Lagos, Open Source Community Africa and DevRel Community Africa. Um, so to the um, table of content for today is we're going to be talking about how node is deployed over the years in various forms so um how it is deployed on a server in a garage and um how node has been deployed on monolith servers how node has been deployed on um, a platform as a service and how node has been deployed on containers then we we'll do a quick um, 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 rundown of serverless of how node um, is being deployed on serverless and um, cloud function or function as a service so let's get into it. Um, so the first thing I would want to highlight is that deployment is not easy. Trust me, anybody that has spent time working as a DevOps engineer, deploying Node.js over the years, it hasn't, it's not as easy as it is, but thankfully as the year, as Node.js evolves, the deployment becomes even easier. So thanks to um, the evolution of Node.js. So the first thing we would be talking about is, um, node deployed on a physical um on a physical server in a garage so basically building your own server so before everything else node used to be deployed on a server in a garage actually so the pros of it basically is that it's has you have a dedicated node server for just your application so you have like a lot of bare metal for your application you can control your node environment to an extent it is secured because you handle everything that has to come with security and um, um which is a really good thing because you do not have to depend on any service provider whenever a provider is down you don't have to worry about it so this is how it was deployed basically node can be deployed on a physical server in a garage um next up is um um the cons so it was too it gets too expensive to set up you know the manpower the technical know-how it gets too expensive to set up and um on that one, it's, it gets very stressful to manage because you're doing all the work yourself. The engineers are having to do all the work themselves. So this is um, another issue. And it's harder to optimize because most of the work is being done by you and your team, most of the part. So handling the optimization by yourself gets very, very tasking. So the requirements, requirements then, as at um, the time where um, nodes used to be deployed on a bare metal, like even though it's still being deployed like that now, um, not just as much as it is if it was before, um, you need the early versions of Node, you need a lot of GPUs, you need RAMs, you need CPUs basically to deploy Node on a, to build a physical server for yourself to deploy Node on it. So the next um, top is deploying um, Node.js on a, um, on a monolith, on monolith server. So basically a monolith server consists of all parts of an application deployed on a single server from the back end to the static part of the application. The pros of this particular way of deploying node over the years is that the entire part is in a centralized server and it's always a great choice to deploy node as a monolith. So you can have all your application in a single um, server, which is really, really great because you can see every single thing you need to see. You can see all your applications coupled together. Then the cons is as the application gets larger, it becomes difficult to update and the memory requirements increase over time. For the requirements, you need a hosting server and Node.js 12 upwards. The next stop is um, being Node.js being deployed on a pass. So plus, pass for platform as a service, also known as pass, involves, it provides a broad set of cloud-based application infrastructure and middleware resources via the cloud. Example of pass that you might have come across is um, platform message. A platform message is quite different because you can deploy a pass on containers then um, Heroku, Vercel, Netlify, etc. Now the import, the pro is Node.js can be deployed faster. Then you can also easily add additional um, data services to your Node application. Then the cons is can be very very expensive at scale, and vendor locking also is another issue. Now the requirements to deploy Node on a pass are depending on what the pass provider specifies generally. Um, next up is deploying node on a container. How now? This is currently the most um, um, used way for deploying node on a con uh, for deploying node generally. Um, a container is basically a lightweight piece of software that provides a runtime envir environment for your application. So platform platform platform.sh uses pass, but 
the, but um, you get to deploy on container. It's basically a pass that you can use to deploy on containers in Kubernetes, then also Docker. Um, the pros, it makes your app, your node app light with a resource efficient. It's um it's easy to manage and control your node infrastructure. Adding external data services with your node app is easier. Now the cons is can be very expensive as still, and you also have issues with vendor locking. Whenever a vendor has issue, then it becomes a problem. Requirements to deploy node on a pass are dependent on the container provider. That's the pass, the container provider, whoever is providing the container services. You also, you also get to control what node version, memory disk size of your application. Now, um, serverless is uh, what we are basically going to talk about next. Um, hold on. Um, so serverless basically involves deploying your application without worrying about servers. Um, um, servers are still present, but it's on, on a as use um, basis. It also uses function as a service, which is a serverless way to execute modular pieces of code on the edge. Um, example is which we've basically seen is AWS Lambda, which is Lambda, which is like one of the most important um, um, provider of serverless and serverless.com. Um, Another pro, a pro of serverless is lower costs. You get to build faster, like when you go to market it becomes very, very faster. The backend code is simple because it's mostly in chunks as modular, it basically um, uses modular programming, which, which functions. So every part of your app backend becomes a function. And um, another part is um, um, another um, a con, the cons of serverless basically is vendor locking, which is one of the major problems of serverless, and it's unsuitable for long-term tasks. So, in terms of like you know, scaling for a very very um, um, long-term tax, serverless is doesn't really do well because it becomes a problem basically, and it becomes very expensive. Even though they sell they sell it as um something as um that provides lower costs. So, um, so that's basically the end of my talk. Um, I hope you've basically been able to know what, um, 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 how Node.js have been deployed over the years as um, are from point A to point B, from um, on-premise to containers, from um, monolith to um, serverless. So my name is Shedra Kakintayo. I am a developer relations engineer at Platform Message. Thank you.